Hello. Welcome to the top of the world. What a fantastic day. It's beautiful, it's cold, fresh snow, perfect. Today what we're looking for is the finest trees. Construction lumber, joinery lumber, this is what we're looking for today. I'm at the far end of the property and you can see there's a natural break running through here. So if you follow the line of the break all the way up, it extends to the tall trees you can see at the back there, all the way down here, and all the way across the valley to those far trees. This is the back boundary, and there's kind of a natural break. <clears throat> so what I've decided is there is a large fir there, which is in the middle. It's not quite the species I'm after, but I'm gonna take that one. This one here, these two are quite close together. I'm going to take this one because it's kind of jutting out a bit. And then I'm going to take this one. This is also a fair, and that's not jutting out again. But if I take that one, that leaves this much space that's kind of empty. And I intend to replant this area here with pine. You can see there's a lot of fir coming through, the young tree. You don't really want a forest of fir. It's not the most valuable timber and it really suppresses the ground. So there's, there's quite a few pines coming through, but there's also a lot of fir. So that gives me, if I take this one here, that gives me this area here. I could put about 20 pines in there. Out of that, I'll end up with about six. And then on the boundary, you can see another one just there that one i'm going to take that as well um i don't use fur in construction but what i have been doing is i've used it on the siding of the sawmill building and i've got the final sections to finish so the fur in stock that i've got that i'm going to use for that these one two three four should replace some of that and and like I say, it, it there's just it's not such a big area here. It's only a small area, but uh, it needs some more pine. It's a bit short on pine, and um, yeah. First course of action, those fur. Yeah, that's what we're doing.
I hope you didn't fall over before that landed. Interesting, with all this equipment I've now obtained, right, I thought this kind of thing was over. I just got no choice. And if you've got no choice, you've got to do something. So as you can see, right, it's taken three, four days tops for all my ice packed and snow to go. I've never seen nothing like it. Anyway, what are we reduced to? Other than the idiot. This. This is what we're reduced to. I'll take the blankie, right, for Casper. He don't like being around the chainsaw. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that across the gravel, right, not good, to the hill there. And we'll be able to travel up over the hill, down and through into the valley. And I'm only doing this, I'm quite lightly packed. I'm doing this because I don't know what the snow depth is now in the forest. And I don't want to risk taking the tractor in, four wheel drive or not, until I know what the tracks are like. And if I've got to go that far, then I might as well drop some trees while I'm at it, because I'm really pushed for time now, just because the sap, you know, any day now, it's going to start to rise. Is it cold today? It is cold today. Yeah, we're hovering, uh, I don't know, minus, minus two Celsius at the minute. We're just under. Um, anyway, we can't get the snowmobile up there yet, I don't think, but I don't know. So we're going to walk in. One of the things I discovered quite quickly, to my cost, is how deep the snow is in places. Have I got a slightly wet, wet left foot? Yeah, which is really bad. I just went in way over my knees. Anyway, now you can hear the noise of the snow shoes. The other thing, arguably, I didn't think too much about was any defence against large carnivores. So, since I haven't seen or heard any wolves, in a long time, I'm going to assume we're just down to the bear. And there's been quite a few really big bear sightings recently. I've also seen a set of prints that I'm not familiar with. And whatever it was, was heavy, because it punched quite a ways through the snow. It also has claws. So I'm not quite sure what that is. But it's not there. So. I know from a lot of previous years. Okay, what's that? That's that same footprint. It's 
punched quite deep, but it's quite small. Like a, like a large dog, but it's deep. Could it be a lone wolf? Yeah, it could be. An awful lot of depth. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. You know where you are. You see the snow going round from the trees? That generally indicates a sap rising, although the birch tells me that it's not actually rising yet. So the energy and the heat from the trees melts the snow around and that will give you an indication that um, sap rising is imminent. You can see he's desperately struggling. Got yourself in trouble there, haven't you, B? Sometimes I wonder, is it me? No, I don't think so. Well, I didn't get very far. I didn't get very far at all. And then the chainsaw started to make a bit of a funny noise. And I'm thinking to myself, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right at all. And then after the last tree fell, it stopped. Is it going to restart? No, it isn't. When I pulled it, it felt very tight. And now it feels like it's got intermittent compression. So that means it's no use. Anyway, so my idea of spending the day out here. Anyway, Casper's had a nice walk. Let's go back. Take this chainsaw apart. Has it done a lot of hours? He has done a lot of hours. Have I been thinking about it recently? I have. It's done a lot of hours. All right, let's go back. It's a nuisance. It's all a nuisance. All right. So with the chainsaw down, now I've come to a property I've never been to before, as in I've been to the front of house property, but I've never been to the forest. Um, on this particular for forest property. Anyway, so what I'm doing, and we're quite, quite a long way. There is a forest road just at the top of this mound right here. Um, I'm measuring and tagging trees. I'll show you how I do that. So I've got this tool here and you put that above the wedge on the tree, squeeze it up, that tells me that's 22 centimetres in diameter. Then I put a tag like that, like that one there around the tree and then I enter that measurement onto my log there. All of these are trees with different dimensions and from the dimension there and the average height of the tree, I can work out how many, well it's not cubic meters because one of these don't make a cubic meter, but uh, what the usable wood under bark is and therefore calculate it into cubic meters. So I'm able to take eight cubic meters from this section here, um, and then I'll tag up all the trees that add up to that eight cubic meters. And then I have to recover from a job we did last year, um, a certain amount of size of cants for wood that went into the homeowner here that I said he has an option, he can pay for the wood or he can return it in wood and return it in wood is what he's going to. Now there's nothing here in this section of the forest. There's virtually no pine at all. And um, we've got aspen or asp, bjork, and um, we're looking for tau or pine. There's plenty of fir, but there's nothing really useful at this end. There is lots, as you can see, lots of birch. 
um, but we carry our same theme of uh, thinning and not leaving gaps and just generally improving on the forest whilst we're taking. Is the snow quite deep here? Yes, it is. Is it very wet? Yes, it is. But we're working our way through it. Okay, well, I made it onto the boundary road. So we're looking at property this side. Runs all the way that way and all the way that way. And uh, run out of tape, didn't bring enough with me. Anyway, there's plenty of, plenty of firewood alongside this road where we don't have to take the tractor into the forest. You know me about walking lightly. Um, we've been from the boundary. Hmm, is it that tall tree? No, it's past that. Well, I've been all the way down the boundary. I'm walking up here to see if I can find the second boundary going down. But there's just, <coughs> there's no shortage of birch. That's for sure. So we're good there. What I've not been able to find is any towel, which is uh, pine. There's none of that here at all. So that must be some, I can't tell you how far through there, there's a power line running, which runs right through the middle of the property. And all that towel or pine seems to be on the other side of that, not on this side. And you find that a lot. No, nope, they're holes made by the moose, the big moose. How do I know that? Moose scratchings. There you go. Moose scratchings. In fact, I can see some more down there. Ooh. Right, and we'll keep going. See now. That's what we're looking for. Look at the diameter on that one there. That'll probably give us payback, that will. Let's go. Oh, there's the boundary. There. Right, is that one inside or outside the boundary? That white marker on that tree there, that marks the boundary. So, it's to me, that, that's on the inside of the boundary. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, that's that one, and then we're looking at that, that's inside the boundary. That'll give us a lot back. Hello and welcome to the next morning. It's quite early, everything's still frozen. I think it's April the 15th today. Yesterday you saw me on another piece of land marking out. I've got the big saw with me today, the still. Uh, am I going to finish down here today? I hope so. That's the plan. And then uh, tomorrow morning we'll be back onto that other property to start dropping those. I can't even believe what I just done. I just set the camera up and dropped the last of the trees that I was going to drop. I got dropped, I, I, I put on the ground, I really needed 8.4 cubic meters under bark. Oh, now you're going to ask me to convert that into cords or feet. Anyway, so I've done seven and I think that's all I want to do because everything else now is too small and I don't want to take the small ones down. Anyway, so I've done three there and they've crossed the, the road up there and I've cleaned them all up and moved them out of the way. And uh, we're packed up and ready to go. And I was just coming back to do my out and I realised I didn't press record. And then, uh, and then I thought I'd press record and did my out. Oh man. Right, so the next time we're back here is going to be with the tractor and the forest crane to the Skogsvagen to pick it up and, you know, take it back to the yard. But we are finished down here now. So I've got absolutely no intention of coming off the trail just to appease the Thomases, right, the doubters, 
about how thick the snow is and how easy it is to go through. Right, well that's going to go all the way. So you can quite clearly see, what is that? Two and a half feet, two feet. Can we go down, can we go down another foot? Till we hit the floor, no. Snow depth is two feet, still. We lost more than half of our snow depth. So you can't walk through that. And quite clearly, Casper can walk on it. I can't, because that happens and then in you go. So, there we go. What is it? Yo, bit. Okay, we're through the worst bit. That's the worst bit for sure. Ah. I'm sure I'm being unnecessarily cautious. I am. It's just that in my in my life map, <clears throat> that's not part of the plan. <sighs> These hills. You must have heard it said a hundred times before. Camera. It don't do. It don't do the hills justice. Another morning, another property. I knew it was going to be cold all day today, with snow. Light snow at that. So, uh, I've walked into this extensive property. Camera doesn't, doesn't do the hills justice. Anyway, there's my sled. And the other day I was in here and I marked up all the birch for removal, selecting the right timbers and thinning all the way down the line of the property. Now I haven't gone in too far for a reason. Because um, it's melting, I don't want to take the tractor into the forest, but I can winch and I can grab from the road with my crane. So I'm not thinning too far back, I'm thinning far enough where I can take the trees and haul them out without actually leaving the road. Um, because it's too soft. It's too soft to run the snowmobile. Um, and, and anyway, this is how I've got to do it. So it's a nice walk in, didn't bring the dog with me because it's a long way and he don't like the chainsaw. So I've left him down at the end of the village in the van and then I've walked in not not our village another village and then I've walked in so uh yeah okay there's a lot of birch here so it was quite easy to do selective thinning and uh, uh again once I've taken what I've taken out of here you're not really gonna notice any difference all the fur is really quite young. It is on this side. This has been, where are we there? 20 years. They, they must have been clear cut at the same time. Um, the birch hasn't come, oh, there's quite a lot in there, but I think that this has been thinned and this is not. So we'll work on thinning through here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just as well I didn't have to take a fir or pine from this property because it's just, it's all too young. And um, there's very little pine, towel. It's, it's a very small amount. Okay, uh, let's get on.
too heavy, too powerful, it's too sharp. So considering the size of the chainsaw I'm using and the size of the trees I'm cutting, I only actually lost control of one. There you go, that's that section there done. Now what we do is we move on down there to the next section marked up, do the same. Obviously clear the road before we go. Oh, I am so glad that's the last one. Firstly, I'm absolutely knackered. It's uh, just gone 10, so we've been here four hours. Um, I've kept the road open. I've cut everything that's marked, everything that I was supposed to cut, cut. And the sap is rising. So that's it. Today is it's the last day. There's no more cutting. So uh, I'll be back here in a week or two with a tractor and pull all this lot out and pack it all up and take it back to the yard for processing. All right, that's me done. On the way back down the road now, go and find the van, find the dog, get back to base in this afternoon. Yeah, I'm wallpapering. Thank you all for joining me. If you like the content, please, please give it a thumbs up because it helps the algorithm in some way. If you're not subscribed, you like this kind of content, don't forget, press the subscribe button. And to all of you, thank you for joining me and sticking with me. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.